Hmm, I thought I'd already been through this way. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Is that where I think is that? Oh, that is southwestern. I was wondering if that was going to the um, alleyway of angles, isn't it? Onwards. Done. Done. Team Ash Mantle. What's this? Entrance, but there's no handle means of opening it. Okay, so that's probably a, one of these magical portly door things. Mayram. Or Mare Am. This old woman stands silently by the wall, staring off into the distance. She seems to be unconcerned with the flow of traffic around her. Clutches a, wooden, a clutch is a wooden pole from which dozens of small fish are dangling. Greetings. Oh, hello, sir. She squints at you for a moment, trying to discern your identity. Oh, my. Here I was, thinking you'd be one of me regular customers. She proffers her fish pole. Tuna, sir. Mackerel. See, come cu cucumber. No fish, th no fish, thanks. I had some questions. Hmm. Her mouth presses down to a tight lip frown. She stares off over her shoulder. Look behind you. What are you looking at? Uh, you can see nothing interested behind you. As you turn back, you catch her looking at you. She looks very away quickly, resuming her staring off into the distance once more. Do I look familiar to you? Goodness, no. She pauses for a moment. Ah, uh, you do. Have you seen me before, then? I think ye. Or, or a man with your very likeness, sir. Twas so long ago. Tell me. Well, sir, you see, me sight's not so good now. Twasn't back then neither, but I thought I saw ye walking past with a small group trailing along behind ye. And what did those people look like? Oh, it's hard to say, sir. Twas so long ago, and ye walked back by so quick like. But I remember now the way ye held your head up. There was a woman following ye, trying to stop ye, to get ye to turn around, speak to her, but ye, ye pushed her away. What, what happened? Beautiful woman she was. Looked so sad, so angry all at once. She stood there for a moment, then followed along behind you just the same, hustling to catch up. Uh, you'd said there was a group. Uh, who else was there? She shrugs. Oh, there was at least two other gentlemen with you, sir. The only one I remember too clearly, though, was tall and thin, reeked of bub he did. I smelled him from across the wee. Looked like he hadn't bathed in ages, too. He followed ye close, he did, and never said a word. Acted like the woman wasn't even there, even when she bumped against him, trying to stop ye. To all I remember, sir. Uh, yeah, we'll give her some copper for a time. Um, nothing interesting. Um, let's give her the twenty. She stares at the helping handful of co the heaping handful of coins for a moment, as if unsure what to do. You hold them a bit close, and she finally takes them, laughing and easily. Oh ho! Oh my! Why, thank you, sir. May the lady's shadow pass ye over, and fortune always find ye. Please come and visit me any time. Farewell. I'm trying to be nice. I don't know if I'm succeeding. Come in, Wait, what? Well, I didn't do anything. Iron nails. Hello. This broad-shouldered woman is shuffling about amongst the huge beams lying on the street. She kicks at the beams with iron-shod boots. Every once in a while, she bends down and wrenches a nail from one of the boards with her bare hands. Don't think we want to cross this lady. She holds each one, praising it, then drops it into a leather sling bag. Greetings. She straightens up, hearing you approach. She's smiling politely, but from her stance and the way her hands rest close to the hilt of her weapon, you can tell she's ready for trouble. You notice one of her eyes has a milky film over it. That's clo close enough there, Cutter. What do you need from me? Some questions. Ask go away, then. Uh, who are you? Pulls three nails from her sling bag, tossing them spinning into the air and catching them in her palm. Iron nails. Iron nails. It's nails. They call me. Drops them back in her bag with a muffled clink. Why are you collecting nails? Sell them to a man. Name her Amrus in the lower ward. Maker of coffins, he is. Tell me about him. 
there's not much to say. He's a bit chatty. He'll rattle his bone box till you bar me if you let him. But a fair bargainer. He needs the nails. I need the chink. And that's about as far as it goes. Where's the lower ward? Yeah, I used to know the way I did, but the Dabbles have changed the streets around again. Don't know how to get there now. I'll need to chart a new path. But I figure the Dabbles... 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 will straighten things out eventually. Dabbles? Oh, Dabbles. The, the lady servants. You must be new to Sigil. Tell me about the Dabbles. They walk all over the city, doing the lady's will. Always building and rebuilding they are, using what's fallen or torn down to make something new. The lady? Oh, no, you don't. I won't be saying anything more about her than I already have. Take my advice, don't go asking around about the lady. I other questions. Uh, I'm looking for Farod. I heard the name I have. Out of a pack of collectors or so, I hear it. Not sure where a body would find him, though. You may want to try Rackpick Square. That's where everyone's saying. We'll leave that. There isn't much over here. A story for Jink. We might... What on earth is that? This down-faced old fellow appears to be selling various weapons. Ah, oh, come on over then. Come to see me blades, have you? I have. Oh, no, I don't want to steal. Um, I've got a lot of random stuff I want to sell. I need to return those prayer beads. Um, the dustman robes we can probably sell. Um, I need to actually look through these a bit more. Hmm. Right. I want to hold on to the iron pry bar. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything. So I think I should probably just sell these bronze rings, I think. Uh, copper ring, that doesn't do anything. I have to sell random things. You won't take my rings, though. Okay. And, yeah, I don't want to sell you that in case I need it later, maybe? And I could pay... Oh, I can pay to have it identified, but that's... I want to get my eye back! And I'll hold on to the... Boat. I want to hold on to that tome just in case it's useful later. Jagged knife. Oh, that's what I was going to do, wasn't it? Come in, Basher. Look here, look here. The finest Toledo blade. Oh, I think I'll just leave these, I think. I do want to keep that iron pry bar, I think. Um You're a fighter mage. Hmm, okay. So I've sold quite a bit of my stuff. Sajai. I'm looking for someone in particular, aren't I? Well, I could just try talking to random people. Oh, you all know the fish shells, man. Yeah, they're named. I'm intrigued by this person who's offering to sell us a story. Because it might be a story to do with us. This man is looking at you with a strange, bug-eyed stare. His eyes are huge, so huge they look ready to pop out of his sockets and roll across the cobblestones. He nods eagerly as you approach, bobbing his head like a bird, and as you near him, you suddenly notice the smell of urine and feces surrounding him. Hence the name. Greetings. The man sniffles, wiping his nose on his sleeve, then opens his mouth to reveal block blackened, rotted gums. Stories for Koi and Sarar. His breath reeks. It smells like this man has been keeping rotten meat stored inside his mouth. Stories for coin. Who are you? The man snorts, thick with phlegm. Names, names, who are you, who are you? Names, dangerous, dangerous. He glances at the ground and stirs the dirt with his foot. Dangerous? Knowing a name or being stuck with on both is a mess of trouble. He looks back at you. My name's a given name, not one asked for. Requind. Once again, you become conscious of his reeking breath and the smell of urine and feces that surrounds him. Given name, given name. Uh, is that your real name? Not my true name, true name. Requin mumbles on, his head twitching every time he says, name. 
A true name is a dangerous thing. It gives others power. He stares at you with his huge eyes and wags his finger. Keep your name secret. Keep it close. Never let it out. What do you mean? Names are like smells. Things can track you with them. Requin coughs. His eyes almost popping out of his skull as he does so. His cough seems to loosen his bowels, for he breaks wind loudly, as if to accentuate his point. Someone knows a true name and gives him power. He licks his lips. The power to hurt. Yeah, that's why I don't use my real name on this. <laughs> I don't know my true name. Updated my journal. Requin's eyes widen. Seeing his eyeballs bulge even larger makes you uneasy. Then you are blessed, blessed. Remain nameless, and you shall be as a spirit on the plains, untraceable, untrackable, unseen, undiscovered. He smacks his gums wetly. A name chosen, a name given, and allows others to find and hurt. Have you, have you been hurt? Reekwood gives a twitching nod, then scratches himself. Let my name slip once, once, only once, only once. His eyes film over as if the memory is painful, then glances at you uneasily. Tell you the story I can, I will, but three coppers must I see. Hmm, here's three coppers. Reekwin gets into a stance, looks left, looks right, then faces you. His fist, face clenches, then with a grunt he breaks wind again. The smell nearly levels you, but he takes no notice. Cursed I! Walk the wards in splendor! He stands up stiffly, nose high in the air. He saunders back and forth, nodding to invisible passerby. Listen. Updated my journal. Reekwin freezes his arms akimbo. Crossed paths with a crossed one. Have the looking of a pumpkin. His seeds curses. Reekwin then thrusts his belly out so far as to appear fat. Slicks back his hair with his filthy palm so he looks almost bald, and begins drumming his fingers on his fat belly. He then walks about, circling the spot where his stuffy upper-class persona used to be. All a jumble with curses, this one was. With a sneer and careless gesture, Reekwin tosses an invisible curse at the stuffy persona. Knew my name, let it slip I had, I had, all it tuck, took it all. He stiffens up again, inhaling deeply and resuming his upper-class persona. The persona suddenly crumples and Reekwin breaks wind violently. Then exhales, filling the air with his foul, reeking breath. Cursed with stenches, smells, excrement. Came here to sell tales, all good for, all good for now. Now Requent is the name, given name, given name. I see. I had some other questions. Questions and questions, questions. Answers, answers? Right, what? Uh, I don't know. What happened to you? Uh, alright, okay. Uh, not today. Oh. Right, so we've got some journal stuff. I'm not actually talking to you. I had some questions. Uh, no, I was going to ask you, who are you again? What happened to your eye? None of your business, Burke. Why? Would you like a matching wound for your collection? No, that particular one is not quite me. No, subtly, I, and I don't think you have much room for another scar besides. <laughs> you could be right. Looks like it would fall apart if anyone tried to use it. Who? What's the name of the person we're looking for here? Again. Uh. Oh dear. In the. Okay, so that's another quest I've got to do. Braskin. Well, we've got to find Braskin, do we? Why is your name Prefer Prefera? Why that name is familiar, but I might be making things up as I go. This grimly looking woman spares you only a brief glance before returning to her rant on top of the stage. She has a powerful voice that carries across the marketplace, even cutting through the noise made by the merchants and the surrounding foot traffic. Leave her be. Right, so we're looking for... I've already forgotten. Braskin. Braskin, Braskin, Braskin. Yeah, I think we're at the point of just randomly going through opening doors, aren't we? Oh, hello. You see that? I don't be bothered if they're not fighting me. I'm kind of happy to leave them be. Looking for Braskin. Nope, you're just a random person. Unnamed. Oh. Unless I'm meant to go and...
Oh, there's a massive horde. Oh, I've made a terrible mistake. I found a door! Let's back off a bit. Yeah, I agree with that. This is folly decision. Well, I... I'm gone. Your inventory is full. I have an earring. I may as well re-equip these bits. I can take them off when I need to sell. Ooh, I've already got one there. Good. Okay. All right. The Office of Vermin and Disease Control. You're a name, person, freedom. Ah! This found looking man is quick to notice he's caught your attention. In moments, he's upon you, hawking his wares. He carries a long wooden pole, dozens of skinned and cooked rats dangle from it. As he speaks, he gestures to them with a broad, filth encrusted hand, smiling a yellowed, snaggle toothed grin all the, all the while. Oh, yay, Cutter, how you doing there? What sort of delicious ratsies is you interested in this fine days? Examine the ratsies. Each rat has been skinned and gutted, feet and tails removed. They dangle from the pole by hooks, punctured through their neck, punched through their necks. As you examine the various manners in which they've been prepared, you realise their heads are slightly misshapen. A bulbous knot of bone protrudes from each cranium, covered in whorls that give it the appearance of brain tissue. They, those are strange-looking rats. Ah, you've got a keen eye there, Cutter. Oh, and I sell his brain vermin, I do. I'm sure you'll find they've got a much richer flavour than your usual rat. Quite nice, really. He proffers them to you once more, waving the pole before you will face enticingly. The rats sway to and fro, hooked like tiny sides of beef. I'd rather eat offal. Wait, what, what? 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 You'd rather eat offal? Steak and kidney pie is brilliant. I can't have it anymore, but it's brilliant. How dare you? Brain vermin? I cut a brain vermin, foul creatures they are. Now your normal rat, they just eat stored goods and multiply, spread disease and all that. A nuisance really, no more. Your cranium rat, though, brain vermin, what I go after, they're just trouble. When you've got more than a handful, and the little pikers together, they start to get smart on you, sometimes really smart. They become more intelligent. Sure as I'm standing here before you, they do. If I ran across any more than two score of them, I'd flee for me life like that. He snaps, to emphasise the point. I would. You get that many of them in a pack. Why, why, they get smart as a man, they do. Go on. Here's my best advice for you, Cutter. If you're bent on catching brain vermin, stick to small packs. A dozen or so at most, but I'll tell you. He steps closer. His breath fetters in your face and speaks in a tone. You run into more than that, more than a couple dozen. You run like you're in the shadow of the lady. What is it? Why, what's there to fear? Sorcery, Cutter, sorcery. You get enough of these little fiends in a space, they gather all sorts of odd powers. Make a basher's brain pour out his ears, they will. Downright frightening. It's just wrong, I tell you. That's why sigils so easy to be rid of them. The bounty and all. So easy to be rid of them. Someone pays for rat tails? That's right, Cutter. There's a Burke in the office of Vermin and Disease Control. Name a lot. He pays a bounty on them. Copperhead. Tail it is, eh? But they ought to be brain vermin, they do. Not just ordinary rats. 